Ninth Story Studios, giving story a voice. Welcome to the Christmas Eve edition of Gifts for the Wicked. Today I'm presenting two short tales that were a bit too long to be drabbles. The idea was to give you all a daily tale in the tradition of Advent calendars, where each day between Thanksgiving and Christmas had a small treat leading up to the big day. I'm guessing most of you know a drabble is a complete story in a hundred words. And I hope you enjoyed the daily tales. If you'd like a video version of this episode, check out our YouTube channel. A sincere thank you to those of you who are supporting the show. Without you, this show would not be possible. Our authors and everyone else involved in making the show, thank you for your support of this show and of independent horror fiction. If you're not yet supporting the show, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash wicked library. For as little as $3 a month, you can help make the show you love possible and get fun rewards. A lot of hard work and money goes into making the wicked library, and I really do rely on this support to help us make sure no one works for free. If you're unable to support the show financially, please give us the gift of a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. This helps others find the show. Thank you to Jesse Hawk for the amazing cover art featured throughout the series. And without further ado, please enjoy your Christmas Eve with two dark tales. Jessica McHugh's Do You See What I See, scored by Nico Viteze, and My Tale, Yuletide Ride. Do You See What I See? by Jessica McHugh. She died alone in a house full of people. While music and laughter swelled like cigar smoke in the other rooms of the Blackwood home, Marie's room was silent. Even the snow on her empty window box fell louder than her final breath, and she was glad of it. Snow had such a short time to tell its story, and she'd had plenty. She'd lived as an ornament, glittering like a snowflake in frozen lace, and it hadn't served her well. The time had come to melt. The annual Blackwood Christmas party stretched on, with no one wondering what became of Marie. And why would they? She'd baked cookies and hung stockings. She'd set out the gilded crystal punch bowl. What else could she do but fade into the background? The kids rarely thought of anyone but themselves, and Jerome was only attentive when he had something to hide, which he usually did. With cocktails fueling the festivities, the family's blind spots bled through them like the feathered ink on a blank check. That's where Marie hid to make her preparations. She wasn't hasty. In the weeks before the party, she waved red flags like a matador, inviting someone to change her mind her efforts went largely unnoticed. Jerome thanked her for the lack of gift debris that year, but didn't connect the lack of debris to the lack of gifts. The kids expressed gratitude that she wasn't nagging them about watering the Christmas tree, but no one noticed it was dead by the morning of the party. Brown needles littered the tree skirt, which was just one piece of holiday decor she used to cover the tubes running from the gas-guzzling beasts in the garage and throughout the Blackwood home. Tinsel, Marie discovered, hit a multitude of sins. Alcohol, too. Though she didn't drink that day, the Blackwoods would blame the cocktails for every blush and dizzy spell, if only to explain their own. Though spirits were involved, the pinholes in the tubing were harder at work as Marie Woosley made her way to the bedroom. To the drowsy end, the family remained blissfully ignorant to her plan, her death, and to the first three Mrs. Blackwoods watching them choke on air. The title of Mrs. Blackwood 
was ephemeral as snow, and just as burdened by beauty that dazzled and warmed and unmade itself within a season. And like snow, what they left behind was drastically different from what they'd been at their peaks. Something once so lovely and unique became filthy slush, more curse than memory, more stain than ghost. The Blackwood home was rife with stains Jerome and the kids were too conceited to see in life and had followed them into death. They couldn't see the police who discovered their bodies two days later, nor the former matriarchs that conspired against them. They couldn't even see each other as they walked from room to room. They'd woken alone in a house full of people, and they would never know. Yuletide Ride by Daniel Foytek Lock your doors. It doesn't matter. Hide the children. It doesn't matter. I am coming. Now is the time of the long, dark nights of winter when spirits howl at your windows in the chill air. You feel the cold and the dark. Deep inside, you feel the primal fear. Trim your trees, light your candles, sing your songs, pretend to feel safe. I am coming. My minions have finished their long work. I watch as they fill my dark carriage with sack upon sack of gifts. I dance as they tack my great beasts with leather and bridle and reins. I laugh as the beasts snort and snicker and prance in place. Gather for protection. Laugh to cover your fear. Drink to bring sleep. Pray against the night. I am coming. Now my pyre burns laden with hulfur and fear and missile. The holy smoke rises and I call to the ancient ones who sired me. The sky ripples and glows with ethereal light. The barrier thins and I prepare for my entry into your realm. I come now. From the great north I ride through the dark night I soar. I come hunting as you sleep into your homes. I am here. You sleep. Your children sleep. Did you leave offerings? Wicked Library is created by Ninth Story Studios, LLC. All rights reserved. Merry Christmas, and to all, a dark night.